A-level physics students definitely need to master both waves questions and six marker questions. Let's combine them into one. So we have an experiment to investigate microwaves. As soon as I see this setup, I'm already thinking about the actual path difference. So we have this thin metal sheet and this distance y. Some of the waves are gonna go from T all the way to D directly, whereas some of the waves are gonna go along here and then they're gonna be reflected and there's gonna be a path difference between those. A series of maxima and minimum intensities are observed. The table shows the values of y for successive maximum and minimum intensities. Okay, so far so good. A vital tactic with six markers, and other questions actually, would be to make note of the command words. So in this case, what we have to do is explain, and also we're gonna need to determine the wavelength of the actual microwaves. This would involve actually doing a calculation. And to help me structure these six marker, I'm actually going to write some headings. So first little bit is simply the explanation. I'm gonna make sure that I'm using plenty of keywords. So waves that are going directly from T to D will end up supposing with waves that have been reflected and are taking this path. What is important is that initially those two waves are actually coherent. How do we know that they're coherent? Well, they've been emitted from the same source. Now we're actually moving the sheet upwards. So this means we're increasing the distance y. And if we do so, we're actually increasing the path difference. And if we increase the path difference continuously, we'll continuously be changing the phase difference. Then I'm going to further comment on the conditions. So maximum intensity will occur when constructive interference takes place, i.e. the two waves arrive in phase, and minimum intensity will occur when destructive interference occurs, i.e. the waves arrive in antiphase. By the way, if you're finding this useful, you are definitely going to find useful my live two-day revision course for three exam boards in April. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to join me. The second part of this question is to actually determine the wavelength. Now, as soon as we see this geometry, we'll probably end up using Pythagoras' theorem or something similar. It's really useful to simply write a heading in our six marker and note this as our determination. And look at all this beautiful data that we're given. We can do plenty of calculations. So one of the direct paths will be simply along here. Let's change the color a little bit. And this path, as we can see, is gonna be exactly 100 centimeters. The other path, which is along here, can be figured out using Pythagoras. So let's say that our distance y is simply 8.4 centimeters. What is this distance here going to be? Well, we can figure out the path difference because our direct path, which is just this one here, is simply 100 centimeters. And our reflected path is gonna be twice this distance. This will just be given by Pythagoras' theorem as the square root of 50 centimeters squared plus 8.4 squared square root it. And that's gonna be around 50.7 centimeters up to three significant figures. But this is not our total reflected path because this is just this side. The complete reflected path also involves looking at this distance right here as well. I.e. the total reflected path is gonna be two times 50.7. Let's write this to a little bit better. My handwriting is not the best, I'm sorry. That is 101.4 centimeters. And now we can directly calculate the path difference. The trick with these is to provide a lot of detail on exactly what we're calculating. So I'm gonna notice that, I'm gonna note down that what we're doing is we're finding the path difference for y is equal to 8.4 centimeters. Well, the power difference in this case is 101.4, take away 100, 
which is just gonna be 1.4 centimeters. And this here is the bit that so many students actually got wrong, probably by not reading a crucial bit of the question. Normally, if there was simply a reflection without a phase change, the first maximum intensity will occur at that value. But in this case, there is a crucial piece of information and that is that there is an 180 degrees phase change when the microwaves are actually reflected. Because there has been an additional phase of 180 degrees introduced by just simply the reflection, not just by the distance, this means that this distance here, 1.4 centimeters, is not equal to the wavelength, but it's actually equal to the wavelength over two. A good way to think about it is that purely the geometry has introduced a phase difference of half a wavelength, and then the reflection as well has introduced another half of wavelength or 180 degrees, into this situation. So this means that our wavelength is actually just equal to 2.8 centimeters. Because this is a six marker question as well, one thing I would definitely make sure to do is to calculate the path difference for a few more data points. Simply by using Pythagoras, we're gonna get the following path differences, 4.2 and 5.6. And we can do the same calculations to further confirm the value of our wavelength. If you're finding six marker questions tricky, you absolutely need to have a look at this next video here, which is gonna give you the best chance at scoring the best possible grades in the exam. Have a look over here.